You won't see anybody here. You know Carol, that. Carol, I love you. Shut up. Where the hell are they? Yes? Uh, uh, excuse me, ma'am. Uh, we had some car trouble over there. Can we use your phone to uh, call a garage? We have no telephone here. Well, who is it, Mildred? It's nothing, madam. No, it's There you are. My, we'd almost given up on you. Uh, Sylvia, sit here. Robert, I know you like the big armchair. Mildred, some sherry for our dear guests. Perhaps they'd like to freshen up first. I think this it's... way. I think you better tell her we're not whoever she thinks we are. She thinks you are her grandchildren. She was expecting them for dinner tonight. The storm, I expect. She wouldn't understand. That's too bad. Look, what about our car? Herbert is at the village right now. He knows about cars. She was so looking forward to Robert and Sylvia. If you could stay for dinner, perhaps afterwards. Who's Herbert? Herbert does work here. We might as well stay. Well, uh, I'm Carol Croft, and this is Neil Croft. Sylvia. Pardon? For tonight, your name is Sylvia. Toast to Robert and Sylvia. Croft. Sorry? We are Neil and Carol Croft. Uh, we're not your grandchildren. <laughs> yes, of course. What you must think. But, but you see, I share this house with memories now. They fill every room. China teacups, heavy boots on rolling floors, bro but you're Sherry. <laughs> we understand. <laughs> Thank you. And what do you do, Mr. Croft? Uh, I work for the newspaper in Halifax. Actually, we've just moved down here from Toronto, and we're looking for a place in the country. That's what we're doing out this way today. My gracious, everything seems so handy now. Now, I can remember when the quickest way to Halifax was by sea. And even that took over three hours. My Thomas would put in there to unload and then come back with stories of what the ladies were wearing on George Street. Now, Halifax seemed like the other side of the world then. But our world was always here. Uh, of course, your world was always Thomas's den, wasn't it, Robert? It's still as you left it. Nothing has been touched. The safe is still there and the chair. Open up that safe if you know what's good for you. <laughs> oh, such a dear child. 
What an imagination. Mrs. Rogers, are you all right? I'm fine, my dear. That was for Mildred's benefit. The poor soul with... Mr. Croft, could you please fetch my shawl? You'll find it just inside the dining room. Uh, yes, sir. I'll go with you. Where to? Seven miles to the next village. Raining like hell. Let's just wait for this Herbert to show up. Look, one of them is crazy. Maybe they both are. It'll be okay. Don't worry. Neil? Mm. Did they say Herbert was coming back for dinner? Yeah, why? Well, there's only four places set here. So Herbert eats in the kitchen. Come on. Are you looking for something, Robert? My name is Neil. We told you that. Mildred, is everything okay? Maybe I can help. Help? I don't expect your help. I expect nothing. I feel nothing. I have learned never to hope. And now you, you are here. Have you found my shawl? Yes. This old house had swallowed you up. Mrs. Rogers, about Mildred. She has been with us here ever since she lost her family in the Halifax explosion. She is a good friend. But there is a Robert. But my daughter's son. He was born on Mildred's birthday. And when my daughter died shortly after the birth, Mildred took it as, well, some sort of sign. She raised Robert single-handedly. And now she cannot accept the fact that he is dead. And I, well, even the illusion of happiness should not be dismissed out of hand. So, Mildred has been this way ever since the explosion. We're all somewhere, are there, Mr. Croft? How did Robert die? I believe Mildred is ready now. Shall we go through? Robert. Very nice. Tender. Delicious gravy. And you, Sylvia? Fine, thank you. Now, can anyone guess what we're having for dessert? Oh, let me. Uh, a pie? No. Pudding? No. I give up. Vanilla ice cream. Oh, hooray! It's my favorite. <laughs> Robert's, too, isn't it, Robert? Yes, Grandmother. Mildred, shouldn't Herbert be back from the village by now? I'll get the ice cream now. That was a telephone. Yes, my dear. Mildred said you didn't have a telephone. Perhaps you misunderstood. Mrs. Rogers, I don't like keeping up this charade. I'm sure it's not doing anyone any good. Uh, who was on the telephone, Mildred? Herbert. The windshield wipers on the car aren't working again. He'll stay in the village until the storm lets up. I told him about your car, Robert. The garage is closed until morning. I'm sure you'll be very comfortable here.
very nice, Mildred. But I don't think I'll have any tea tonight. I seem to be tired. Perhaps I'll have a short nap before the game tonight. Hey, Robert? Don't forget, we're partners again tonight. Would you help me, please, Mildred? Don't you go disappearing again, Robert. I must rest. Newspaper reporter. I can remember when it was safe crack, then dark. Cowboy pirate. Why? Why can't he be himself and face things as they are? Sylvia. She caters to him. She's whatever he wants her to be. You know why. Life is so sheltered for them here. But like a fairy tale. They have never seen the real world. Mm -hmm. Thomas and I so loved our family. You remember breakfasts in the sunroom, the teacups, the blue china jardiniers, the ferns and the copper statues. And Thomas would catch the sunlight on the tip of his knife and, and dance the reflection around the room. And Tinkerbell! <laughs> they would try and catch Tinkerbell. The fairy wing, Mildred. Where is the rosewood box with the fairy wing? I know Robert would so love to see it again. There isn't enough light now. Tomorrow. Yeah. You see, he, he would love to see it tomorrow. Neil, I don't care. I don't want to stay here tonight. You think I do? Right, but what can happen? Sure, they're a little weird, but they are just two little old ladies. Call the garage. Mildred said it was closed. Okay. It doesn't work. The line must be down somewhere. Mildred, maybe we should talk. There's been enough talk in this house for one night. It's late. I'm tired. I'm going to bed. I'll show you to your room. this house for years. She says that every night. But she won't stir now till morning. Sleep well.
and seven. feel about about this Herbert. What do you mean? Do you think he exists? He's supposed to do the work around him, right? The place looks like it's ready to keel over. Remember the orchard where the car broke down? That hasn't been touched in years. Who knows? Maybe he's out there right now, creeping through the underbrush with an axe in his hand. Stop it. Hell, maybe the whole bloody family's out there in the hall right now, tiptoeing around, carrying hatchets. Oh, I mean it. Oh, sorry, sorry. Hey. What? Lock. Okay. Honey, there's nothing we can do. Point in room one. The best thing we can do. To get into bed. Snuggle up. Next thing you know, it'll be morning. Yes, it It would be nice. Mm -hmm. Pajamas would be nice. A little drawer there in the left hand side. Uh, what did you say? I, I don't know. It, it just came out. I suppose we better have a look. Huh? Oh, no, don't. Uh, honey, the worst thing that can happen is that there'll be a pair of pajamas in there, right? Not yep. a big deal. Don't be silly. It's just a coincidence. Now, look, they've had it before, haven't they? I don't care. Oh, honey, it's going to be okay. Gosh, people around here are so great. You know, I was just talking to Herbert on the phone. You know what he said? First thing in the morning, the man from the garage is coming with his truck. I'm not even going to charge us to tow it back. I told you. Everything's going to be just great. God. Hey, hey, Carol, wait. Where's Herbert? In the village, I expect. There was a man in here. And a boy. There was no one. I heard them. I heard them. Laughing. They talked about a light chair. Sit down.
I'm going to tell you about a boy who grew up in a fairyland, who didn't know that life is hard and cruel, that people are beaten down for chasing even the smallest of dreams. For him, everything was a gift tied with a ribbon. And if it was not suitable, it was exchanged. The house he lived in was a castle, peopled only by the family and those who served them. In that castle was a room. And in that room was the lie chair. The boy would sit with his grandfather in that chair, and they would tell each other lies. Not lies as evil, or lies as deceit, but lies to make a happier truth. If anything began unhappily, it was brought to the lie chair, and a new truth was forged for Nothing was ever lost. No one ever died. No one went away. There was nothing that could not be accepted. Because everything was perfectly acceptable. And when the grandfather died, and the boy became a man. And he found that everything was not perfect. He chose the lie chair over the imperfect world of men. What happened to it? Well, Robert. <laughs> he died, they say. He and his cousin, Sylvia. They climbed into his automobile and suffocated themselves. Oh, how everybody cried and went on. Such a waste, they said. But Robert's life will never be wasted. Such a lovely morning. Did you sleep well, Robert? I always sleep well, Mildred. Uh, may I have my tea now, please, Mildred? Oh, and, and some toast for me, Mildred. Me too, and jam. My, aren't we hungry this morning? <laughs> <laughs> well, Robert, what did you have in mind for today? Well, after breakfast, a good go at that safe. You know, I've been studying the tumblers and the calibrations, as well as the weights and the counterbalances. Robert! I do you think we want to hear you carry on? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what's keeping Herbert. Grandmother, may we?
we look at the rosewood box now? Oh. Yes, of course. Next on Peep Show, find out who's telling the truth on So Who's Goldberg? Yeah, well, I'm twice as Jewish as you are. And I ain't ever wore a beanie, even. <laughs> you know why? Uh, no, why? I've been circumcised twice. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. <laughs> why twice? You play your piano for 11 hours and then you just go out and pick up a guy you didn't even want? Oh, no, I, I wanted you, that's why I, I picked you. Why? One. Why me? The limp? Don't be ridiculous. Well, why? Because of your eyes. This is you? <laughs> 